Hey, 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 hey. Here we are thinking about the concept of what it means to be at various stages of your development. There are two prime stages. I know that there is plenty more, but I want to break this down into two prime stages and one to attempt to avoid and how to recognize it. After which, I'm going to talk for a few moments about the concept or at least the difference between process orientation and product orientation. This is important. Well, I don't need to tell you it's important. Either you think it's important or you don't. I don't give a fuck. I know it's important. That's why I'm busy telling you right now. So if you are starting to grow anything, a business or an artistic project or some kind of learning curve, you are going to be at the beginning. You are going to be trying to learn how to do it, to get good enough. And when you do that, there's an enormous learning curve. There's lots of different concepts. There's lots of different aspects. There's lots of different components to sort of get under your belt. You are going to be trusting some people to explain to you how these things work, and you won't know enough to be able to <laughs> sort of understand whether or not they know what they're talking about. So you may make some mistakes. You may trust some people who truly don't get it and don't know that they don't get it. We're going to deal with those people after we talk about the first two phases of growth. So you are going to have what I refer to as the price of education. Your ability to do the things exceedingly well won't be there. You may do a few of them well, and you may get lucky at that. Do not think just because you've gotten lucky at that, that you know that well already. Even riding a bike takes actually putting together the coordination, the balance, and a sense of mental dexterity that allows you to trust yourself and get on that bike and actually go without convincing yourself you're going to fall. As soon as you convince yourself you're going to fall, you might fall. You actually start to fall. That's a mindset thing. But those components, even with something as simple as riding a bike, actually take getting the hang of this stuff. Hey, what's happening? How's it going? Who do we have here? Let me take a look at this. Because you're, you're going to have to announce who you are because I'm on StreamYard right now. And I want to know who I'm speaking with. Welcome, welcome. Hello, my fine friend. Uh, announce your name. Uh, type your name in because on StreamYard, I can only see Facebook user, you see. Hey, Maria, what's happening? We're going to be speaking soon. Isn't that right? You see, Maria, I'm going to show you something. On, on StreamYard, this is a weird little thing. On StreamYard, it comes up as Facebook user unless you actually... Yo, Dimitri. Hey. <laughs> uh, Cocti. Dimitri, Cocti. Eh? Cocti. Yes. <laughs> my drug. Um, so when you deal with getting started, you are going to make some mistakes. It's okay to make those mistakes. Sometimes you are going to trust people who claim to know what they're what what they're doing and they don't. And that's also part of it. You may actually make some mistakes because you are trusting people who convince you that they know what they're doing and they don't. You need to have this slow learning curve to get the hang of all of those different things so that you can recognize what you're good at, what you need to get good at, and how you gradually get there with all the different working parts until all those components get to a certain level. That's when I refer to the price of education, that is your time logged 
learning something new and gradually getting good enough at it. That's phase one, okay? Getting good enough at it. Don't expect that you're going to, you know, make $500,000 in a week. Don't believe any of those assholes who promise that. They are greasy scumbags and they are lying to you in order to get your money. If you buy their bullshit and you succumb to that shiny object crap, you deserve it. And when they fuck you, don't complain because you asked for it. You bent over and said, oh, give me your shiny object horse shit. I'm willing to pay you. <laughs> okay. It doesn't work that way. When you get started, you need to actually move forward in a gradual and patient with yourself understanding of how to, you know, be good to yourself. Gradually learn all the things. The learning curve is a gradual process. There are some things that can expedite your process well. What I am doing actually enables people to be attracted to you. I create an opportunity for you to express yourself in a unique way. And your unique way makes you separate from that herd of generic bullshit out there. And that is one of the compelling things in this online space. And the reason that it's compelling is that we recognize when we are being manipulated, we recognize Editing, when people have edited videos, there is a time and place for edited video, but there's a lot of not time and place for edited video. And I was talking briefly with a guy yesterday who's quite successful doing his real estate stuff and say, oh, I have, a, I have an assistant who does my video. They say, you have an assistant who makes your video edits for you, but that person can't actually prevent you from looking like a manipulative schmuck. Because all of the editing makes you look like it has been prepared and everything has been removed. And what I say is show the authentic you. That's what we actually want. But that, for example, is one of the components of people who know what they're doing and will actually hasten your progress. There are others who won't hasten your progress. And this is when you're getting started. And by the way, this is not just about business. This is all also about like being a creative individual on the planet. Whenever you're learning something new and whenever an artist is learning something new, that artist is also trusting one or another director or teacher. And the creative process is about not trying to get to that product really quickly and letting yourself move forward. Yes, you're welcome. Great information. Gradual and patient. I'm delighted. Yeah, uh, announce announce your names. I mean, we got Maria, we got Dimitri, and announce who you are when you join. It's, I'm, it's my pleasure. So now let's move to phase two, which is the basic other aspect, which is going from getting good at something to already having a certain level of stuff, and then you want to perfect it and get better. When you are perfecting something and getting better, you are actually going from knowing what you're talking about to refining and perfecting something. And that can be a business. I have a business here. I have gotten to a certain level. I now understand lots of different components. And I have people who are always clamoring to help me. I can do this for you. I can do that for you. They want to sell me shit because they see that my stuff works. And I have to be careful to assess which things I know are important right now. And the many different components that can grow something require that I steer my ship with my own responsibility. And I say no to a lot, a lot of people. I say no to a lot of people. I say no all the time. I don't say no meanly, sometimes meanly. Because sometimes I feel like not 
giving them the patience that they think they deserve and they don't deserve it because they're sending me messenger crap that has like no introduction and just, I'm going to cut to the chase. This is what I do. Are you interested? No, I already have a hundred people who have offered me the same thing you have and they did it nicer. I only work with people I trust. And it's like that. You work with people you trust. When you get to a certain level, you no longer step into just trusting people just because. Going from knowing your stuff to getting really good to getting truly better requires going deep on individual levels and individual components that you know are your priority. And certain people, like when I teach people how to create a one woman or a one man show from nothing that they can present on their own like gangbusters, they have to trust me and I guide them into a process that enables them to see which questions they need to ask first and then they need to answer those questions. I don't tell them what they need to do. It's their shit. It's their stuff. It's their responsibility. I provide the way of seeing all of the different things, and I make them understand that they need to choose various ones at various times. Their choices will take something in a direction and they need to commit to going in that direction in order to see whether or not that thing is actually the thing that works, actually the thing they need. Sometimes you have to double back and then go in another direction. That's the nature of the beast. All the big businesses you see, all the great art that you see, no one is following like one formula, except for occasionally Disney that has this stereotypical bullshit. The only cool thing about Disney is morphing into something else is that they purchased Pixar, which was a brilliant company, and actually destroyed some of the quality of the Pixar working creative momentum by making it form fit into Disney's rule book. Disney's rule book is actually pretty fucking disgusting. That's just my opinion. You can like or dislike it. I don't care. But the fact is that you have these people who you whose services you buy, and they provide you a way of seeing all of the other components in this top level, which take you from getting, you know, you, you got to that, you got to that level where you now know what you're doing enough to see the big picture. And then you are shown all of the different components of that big picture. And you can choose the different ones that you need to in order to build those the right way to hone and perfect. That is the same whether you're building a business, whether you're learning how to make good cakes or good soups or good sauces or, you know, cook a perfect burger. Anyone can make a regular burger. There are some people who take it to a series of levels that is expertise. But let's go beyond burgers. It's about making, you know, instead of burgers, it, baking good bread. That is a quality art form. Growing an excellent garden, that actual, you know, there is there is amateur landscaping where you learn, and then there is a point where you get to a level of understanding where you can open up the world of what it means to landscape and make a brilliant arboretum in your backyard, right? That is where you reach a level of expertise. Maybe you're not an expert yet, but you are getting to that world of stuff where suddenly you're no longer a beginner or even an intermediate beginner, and you're definitely not an amateur at any of it. You get the thing. That's phase two, okay? Those are the two basic situations. Taking excellence and turning it into unbelievably, you know, godlike magnificence, that's another thing. And I'm not talking about that one right now because that's a, that's a highly, 
that's a that's a highly detailed series of components and i just wanted to break it down into those two basic ones getting good to a point where you are good and then getting truly better where you know you're at that good level and you can under you can actually talk about the qualities of that truly better realm with the people who truly know better. I spend a lot of time helping people to start and get good. I occasionally have the good fortune to be able to deal with someone who's at that good level where I can actually bring them from good to truly better. And in the world of performers, like working with professional and pre-professional performers, they already have years of training. So there is a level of talking that is very rewarding to me. But you can't learn the language of this until you learn all of the language of this, right? You know, breaking it down, two different languages. And you want to recognize that. Those are the two components. Then I'm going to throw in the people who have the problem. This is the people you want to avoid, and you may actually run into them. You probably will. Actually, you definitely will. And you may from time to time be one of those people. This is the third phase. It's delusional, egotistical bullshit. When you think that you actually are good at something, but you're not. And the reason that happens is because <laughs> you, when you're learning at the beginning, you have this learning curve of things. And I've talked about this in many other places. I've talked about this at length in my free Facebook group and also in my mastery program. Learning to understand what you don't know you don't know. This is all down here, what you don't know you don't know. Occasionally, there are things up here that you don't know you don't know, but everything that you do, everything you don't know, everything that you do not know, you can actually fix because you can find somebody who can help you clarify and clear up or do for you what you don't know. The problem is that there's so many components that you have to learn what you do not know you do not know. And that's a big problem because you don't know that you don't know it. The issue there is that some people understand and keep a humble sense that they are moving along while others do not have a humble sense of that and they are oblivious to the fact that they don't know they don't know and that is more dangerous because those people those are the people who actually become part number three which is the thing to avoid which is the delusional egotistical bullshit those people will say all sorts of things that they think they can do and they think they know and they don't. Those people will magically and mysteriously and confoundingly walk around thinking they're good at all sorts of stuff that they suck at. They also may try to convince you that they know what they're doing in order to help you and those types of people are fucking dangerous. I unfortunately took the advice of a person I respect greatly and spoke to a guy who convinced me that he knew what he was doing and I bought some of his program and it was a piece of vile, fe fetid crap. I, I keep him as a friend without unfriending him because I like to keep him around as a reminder that I occasionally make that mistake myself and that that guy is a delusional, egotistical scumbag who took my money and I'm the chump that bent over for him. But he is a delusional scumbag and he's a waste of time. His products suck. His course sucks. And it takes people nowhere. 
and he pays his mortgage from it or whatever. And I keep him as a friend. I didn't unfriend him because I like to remind myself to not do that again. Everybody repeats those things occasionally. People like this exist in the world. And you want to understand how to avoid that by being humble. I can take my lumps. I'm fine with making mistakes. Like I said at the beginning of this, the price of education. If you don't know what you don't know and you remain humble, you won't become a delusional, egotistical scumbag who will make mistakes like that. <laughs> yeah, I bet you you'd like to know who that is. I'm not... Uh, I'm not the type of person who lambastes and skewers people publicly, so I'm not going to say. <laughs> and he's not the only one. They're all over the place. There's giant groups devoted to teaching people. I have some people who have, I have some people who have learned my free shit and become a coaching confidence person and they suck at it. And that's okay. Some of them are, honest, non-egotistical, humble people, and I continue to help them, and we are, you know, they are my clients, and they will get better at it. Other people are competitive people who say, no, I got this, and say, oh, fuck, man, you are doing damage to a whole bunch of people, and no, you don't got this, but you don't know that you don't got it because you're delusional, because you don't know what you don't know. Fine. So it's not the only one. They're all out there. Your growth depends on your remaining humble, your remaining generous. I offer loads of free tips, tricks, tools, and hacks in my, in my free group. I don't need to charge for everything. I know how many things I can give away that can help people get to a certain level. And when they see that they've gotten to a certain level, they start to understand how impactful this can be, and they may well become my clients. I'm not going to sell. I'm not going to go toward that cloying, desperate way. So now I want to talk briefly. Briefly, this is already 20 minutes. I want to talk briefly about the difference between product orientation and process orientation. When you are going from start to middle ground, getting good enough, you, you need to have a certain process orientation that teaches you how to get to that level because if you focus on the product, and I know you want to, I know you want to make something good. Everybody says, I want to be good at this. I want to make something important. I want to make something that helps people. Say, so, okay, fine. I want to make a piece of art that inspires people. That's not the way to actually make a piece of art that inspires people. Focusing on the product that you want to make makes cheap choices because you are going to always be more conservative with your choices when you're trying to make when you're trying to make something good the learning curve rising up is all about enjoying the process and letting the process guide you forward product orientation is valuable when you actually tweak things when you actually have to make the decision to take whatever it is that you have and sort of add little things, little bits and pieces until you get it good. Like what I'm going to be doing with Maria. I'm going to be helping her title her offer in a good way because it deserves to be out there in the right way to express the thing. And that will be developing a basic title framework and then gradually refining the thing into something that sounds and that sounds really good and interesting and attractive and sexy and compelling and generous but you cannot both be process oriented 
and product oriented at the same exact time. The process lets you be wild and free. You have to focus on the process in order to get out of your own way and make crazy, weird, interesting choices and push the boundaries of your own sense of what's right. And the product orientation actually takes all of those wild things and refines them down. If you focus from the beginning on that product, you will make cheaper, more conservative choices. And that is why you don't want to focus at the beginning on the product. You want to focus on the process because you will be wilder and bolder and more uniquely interesting and get out of your own way more. Then you take all of that information and you compile it and you start to pick and choose and throw things away until you shape that process into product. I hope that makes sense. That's my little missive. It's 26 minutes now. It's been a long one. I had to do this early because, in fact, my... I have family coming over because we had to postpone our Christmas. <laughs> so in a little while, I will set all my business down and we will uh, have a family uh, Christmas here. So to recap, the three components of growth, two of which are necessary and one of which is unnecessary, Getting good. Then once you're good enough, you get better. There are two different phases. Getting good starts humbly with a learning curve. Getting better has an open sense that you suddenly know enough about enough things so that you can prioritize more effectively. Delusional egotistical bullshit needs to be avoided by understanding your humility when trying to figure out what you don't know you don't know. And the other aspect is process orientation versus product orientation. Don't go for product when you're at the beginning and you should be getting bolder and more out of your own way by venturing into process first. They are not to be dealt with at the same time. They actually, if you, if you try to be wild while making good product, you will always conservatively short shrift your boldness. Okay. Tomorrow's New Year's. Happy New Year. When you want more from this, I'm going to leave my link to book a call. I will also welcome you to take some massive action on what I just talked about. And you deserve somebody who knows who can actually guide you with their own humble yet compelling experience to lift you up through those phases and introduce you to the concepts that you deserve to be able to see and choose. When you get to level one and then up to level two, you can actually have plenty of people dying to work with you, dying to take your money to help you, and you can, you can leverage everything you've built because you're no longer trying to get started. You have now jumped into making that big fucking thing happen. Okay. My best to you. Speak soon.